Hey, what's going on? This is Mark from Boiling Steam. Today I want to take a quick look at the DualSense controller compatibility as far as the Linux landscape is concerned. So far from the videos that I've seen, it works on Windows and Android. Uh, I don't know about iOS. Um, apparently it's working on the Switch as well with the adapter from 8-bit do. And it's also got basic compatibility with Linux. So here I have my DualSense controller and I'm going to connect it to my computer through Bluetooth. So I simply tap the PlayStation button. These LEDs will glow. Oh, come on, you're not going to pair right now. Okay, let's go to our Bluetooth settings here. Hang on a second. Press it again. There we go, there it is. Alright, so it's solid blue to indicate that it is connected. With my DualShock 4, there'll be a little battery indicator here on the taskbar, but there isn't for the DualSense controller. And uh, I've tried using the DS4 driver that was written in Python. Um, I ran into an error uh, trying to use that. So this is probably something that we're going to have to wait for for official support from either Valve or from the Linux kernel itself. But uh, yeah, it's got a bigger battery than the DualShock 4 has. I don't know how long exactly it'll last, but uh, it's never died out on me in all the time that I've used it. And it just feels great on the hands. I was playing Super Smash Bros. Melee yesterday for a few hours, and uh, it, it was comfortable the whole time. I didn't get any sort of cramps from using it after a while or anything like that. So it's definitely of good quality. Now one feature that is pretty cool about the DualSense is that it has a built-in mic. It actually has one on the front here. And this is a uh, microphone button that will mute the microphone, I guess. And then there's one on the back right here. You probably can't see it, but there's a microphone there too. And here's a reset button for the dual sense. So I guess the back microphone is to filter out any white noise that comes through the front microphone. And I did test the microphone out. It is actually pretty good quality, probably better than the HyperX Quadcast that I'm using right now. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is Sony's new DualSense controller with their built-in microphone, and it is actually working out of the box on Linux, kernel 5.8.16, on Pop OS 20.10. So while vibration may not necessarily work in-game, I have found this strange bug where the vibration actually works through the controller speakers. So you notice I have my controller directly connected to my PC through USB-C and I'm going to go into my sound settings here and when I have this controller connected this option shows up. Okay now I'm going to try and play a, a song here a heavy metal song and what's going to happen is as this song is playing, it's going to very faintly play through the speakers, but the controller will also vibrate. And it's also going to vibrate according to the amount of bass that's in the song. Okay, now I'm not sure if you can actually hear this vibrating or not, but I can hear very faintly the music playing through these speakers. And the control, yeah, you can see the controller is moving ever so slightly. And the deeper bass sound effects are going to leave a stronger vibration. That's really interesting. So I don't know if you can hear this. Well, that's, that's this song going on through the speakers. Let's just give it some tests. So first we're going to uh, try Super Smash Bros. Melee and try it online. Um, one thing I will note 
is uh, the triggers they're registered as a full press it doesn't matter how little or how much pressure I put on them they're just registered as a full press and uh, I happen to notice that's the same with Steam games as well so it may be a bit of a problem depending on what game you're playing um, racing games in particular may suffer from uh, this but otherwise uh, the sticks are working just fine pretty much everything even though the, the trackpad itself doesn't work as a mouse you can still click it and it'll still be registered as a button press there is no vibration and what was the other thing that was missing uh, no gyroscope either so that's pretty much is all there is to it all right so let's play some melee here One quick note, I forgot to add the mirror filter on OBS for the webcam, so that's why the sides looked a little different. But now that I have just figured this out, it'll now be where it should be. So when we use the controller for the first time in Steam, it'll be detected as a generic controller. And I don't know if checking this box will actually do anything different. But in Steam, you will have to define the layout because some of the buttons are definitely going to be mixed up when you're playing your games. The DualSense uses X input instead of the old direct input that the DualShock 4 was using, but you still have to redefine the controls to get them the way that you want. But uh, here we can give this... Give this uh, controller name call it DS for short uh, rumble obviously is not working right now so there's no point in doing that um, the buttons um, as you can see there on the bottom they're PlayStation right now because I defined it that way I don't know what good calibration is gonna do I figured that I had to uh, reconfigure all the controls by manually clicking them instead of just going through them all I don't know why but if we go ahead and hit save, and then you can select the type of controller that it is. So if you wanted Xbox style buttons in Steam Big Picture mode, then you would select this or Xbox 360, however you want. But in my case, I just selected PlayStation 4. Notice that there's no PlayStation 5 right now. Um, but we'll just have it as PlayStation 4 for now. For the sake of keeping this video short, I'm only going to be testing one steam game and that is drag which i think would make good use of the triggers are rather explaining that full presses they, they can be a problem so let's go ahead and play this so if we go to the options here you'll notice that accelerate and break have been assigned to the triggers okay now notice that there's absolutely no no swaying of the blue bar here. It's working for the control stick, but not for the triggers. Okay, so just a light amount of pressure on the accelerator. That's going to be full acceleration. And same thing with the brake. Just a light tap on the brake. That's a full brake. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a quick test run. Uh, 
Okay, so let me lightly tap on the acceleration. Okay, now we get pretty much full acceleration there. I've noticed that there is a little bit of uh, sensitivity there, but not by much. All right, now let's tap the brake. Full brake, okay? Light acceleration. Light brake. Which is translated as a full brake, okay? Now let's actually try this again. There you have it. All right, so that is going to wrap up today's video. More information can be found about the DualSense controller and its compatibility on Linux on Boiling Steam. You have the essentials. The buttons are working. The analog sticks have their sensitivity. You have your built-in microphone, which works great. But other than that, the more advanced features of the device, such as the adaptive triggers or the haptic feedback trackpad functionality gyroscope those are not here right now on linux now hopefully someone at valve already has one of these devices and they're working on it now so who knows maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll get official support for this controller and we'll have all those features incorporated but right now you have all the essentials so you can get away without having vibration this is this is pretty pretty good to go and besides the triggers as well and the benefit you'll get is a longer lasting battery compared to the DualShock 4 and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching this video